So Dave, I don't want to talk about what you've accomplished so much today is I want to talk about you. I want to talk about who you are. So welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here. Um, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Larry. Let's, um, let's take a step back and I want to know about Dave, not the man. I want to know about Dave, the boy. I want you to take me back to your childhood and let's talk a little bit about what, how were you raised and, and, and what is it that, that caused you to, um, you know, to, to be able to, um, uh, to, to grow up the way you did, but, but to be able to have some of those incredible attributes that you have. So let's, let's go back. Tell me about, tell me about how did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Kind of bring me into that loop. Yeah, I was, I was actually born in Indiana while my dad was going to college and working three jobs, I think at the same time. But, uh, I grew up in Sumter, South Carolina, which was my parents' hometown and a small city in the center of the state of South Carolina. Um, uh, maybe 25,000 people at the time, uh, Air Force Base town. So I had a lot of uh, friends that were coming through there through, through the Air Force. Um, and uh, conservative uh, roots, uh, grew up as uh, in a Christian home. Um, both my parents worked, both were professionals. Um, and, uh, you know, typical kid in the South, grew up playing sports and loving um, just doing the things that kids did during that time frame. I played outside, uh, played baseball until I couldn't walk anymore, couldn't crawl anymore uh, every day, and uh, loved playing sports, all types. And um, this kind of a normal childhood in a small uh, southern town, I think. So growing up in that in that southern town, and and your mom and dad in this, this conservative southern southern town, you walk me through what's a What's an average week like for Dave King growing up as a child? Let's go back to even before you were a, a teenager. You're you're eight, nine years old. It's summer. What does that what does that look like for you? Well, you you play outside from the time you get up in the morning until the time your mom ring, rings the door, dinner bell or until it's dark, uh, whichever comes first. Generally, um, you know, I had a lot of friends. We we were on bikes all the time. We played baseball. There was a little uh, about a block from the house. There was a baseball field and. Uh, I played ball all day, every day that I could, uh, whenever I had the opportunity. You know, we rode bikes down through the woods and did all kinds of uh, you know, normal stuff, uh, being outside an awful lot and, and just enjoying each other, uh, enjoying the time together and um, uh, coming home just long enough to stay fed so you didn't get too hungry or thirsty, I guess. You know, I, I hear you, you describe that, and, it's, and it sounds like uh, even at a young age, you, you know, you were independent. I mean, you were out playing from from can to can't, um, and and really, it's quite different uh, in today's culture, especially even right now. But but it's really different than than when you grew up, huh? I think it, I think it was different back then. I think uh, it was safe to do it then. I think now things are just different. Um, we didn't have all of the electronics and the distractions and uh, all the things that we have at our hands today to that frankly, help us a lot with productivity. But at the same time, um, uh, you know, we had freedom to do things beyond what I think kids can do today in the environment that we have. And so there was freedom there. There was uh, creativity there. You had to figure out what to do to, to, to fill your day during the summers. Um, you know, obviously during the school week, you were pretty busy with a routine. But uh, during the summers and the days you, you had off, you spent more time trying to figure out uh, new games you could play or new things you could do, um, new things you could uh, observe or, or take in, places you could go that weren't too far from the, from the house that um, might be a fun experience for each of us. Yeah, I think it's a, it, it was a whole different mindset. And, and I'm just kind of curious, when you were in that environment, was that – did you know this was special? Did you know this was different? Or did you, did you think this is just a norm? This is the way everybody lives their life. Uh, I think it's pretty normal. Uh, just watching others around me. All I knew was that at the time, um, you know, having now looking back on it, I do see it as being quite special uh, as, you know, an opportunity to do, to do those things. You know, there, there, there's a lot of fun things to do today with electronics and, the media, the, all the all the opportunities that we have before us now, but back then that's what we had and that's what we enjoyed, and uh, you know we found a way to deal with it. You know, as we go through this COVID crisis, we're kind of getting back to that in some ways, and 
Uh, you're having to find more things to do um, in a smaller environment uh, and maybe more independently, uh, clearly. And uh, I find that kind of um, a little bit symbolic of the way things were uh, back then. Now we have a lot more uh, capability with the internet and all the uh, social media and all the different opportunities you have to communicate with others. So it's different today, but you see some similarities at least. Uh, oh yeah. Go back and, and talk about your parents, if you will, for just a minute, because um, I've met them and they're wonderful people. <laughs> what, what did you kind of think through some things that they taught you or that you took away from their, their leadership, their parenting of you? What are some things they, they taught you growing up as a, as a child? Yeah. You know, as I said, conservative home, um, rules-based, um, you know, things went better when you followed the rules, uh, clearly, and there were consequences when you didn't. And uh, I think it's important for kids to learn that today, and I think that's something that is missing in some of our societal mm. circles today. Mm. Um, so I knew what I could and couldn't do, and uh, I had a good time. Uh, I, I really enjoyed life. My mom and dad were really fun. They uh, tried to give us experiences beyond what they had. Um, you know, their whole goal in life was for us to do better than they were able to do. And frankly, both of them were quite successful in their careers as well mm. in the end because they worked so hard and, and were so diligent uh, towards doing those things. But, you know, they they always worked hard at trying to help you to understand you need to enjoy life. You need to work hard and you need to do the right thing. And yeah. um, I think those are probably the three things that I would stick in my mind as um, things that maybe the most preeminent things that they taught me, uh, the most, uh, things on the, on the tip of my tongue anyway, they were, um, they were loyal people. They were, uh, good to each other, uh, focused on family, doing a good job where they were. They had a great work ethic. They both worked hard. And, uh, I, I think that helped prepare me for, for my career, uh, very positively. Yeah, I, I love your takeaways. Um, you know, enjoy life, work hard, and do the right thing. Man, that's a that's a recipe for leadership um, that you were that you were taught at a very early age. Right. Think think back during those times, and what are some of the difficulties that you faced? What What do you think were some obstacles that you had to overcome? You mean when I was a kid, when I was growing up? Yeah, you know, um, I, I wasn't the best student. Um, I was okay. I had to work hard. Um, mm. I think I had some, um, focus issues. I think I might've even had some learning uh, disability issues because I struggled with things that other people seem to seem to come more quickly for. Um, and what I had to do was learn to deal with those things and learn to cope with those things, mm. learn new mechanisms mm. to, uh, to learn the way I needed to learn. I had some great teachers that helped me with that along the way. And, Help me to understand that a little better. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, you know, through middle school and even early high school, I struggled a bit. Um, I made good grades, but it's because I worked very hard and and had to 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 uh, to get that job done. So, you know, um, I wasn't always the smartest kid in the class, um, but I also wasn't afraid of of digging in and working hard and, and trying to get done what needed to get keep get done and. And just keep things in perspective. Um, uh, I, I loved to. I was an athlete. I loved to play ball, uh, and I focused a lot on that. And, um, and you know, in the end, that desire to do that professionally didn't work out for me because I was just short on talent. But um, I loved it. Uh, I loved the game. I loved what you, what you were able to learn from team sports. I loved mm -hmm. being around other people that you know, had the same goals and agendas that you did. And I think I've learned an awful lot about leadership and how to work with others and how to play well together, frankly, uh, through those, those sporting events. So, um, you know, I had to work hard at it, but, um, I, you know, I was, I was a reasonably good athlete and, and had a, had a really fun time with, uh, with in the team sports specifically. I mean, you played, you played baseball, uh, in high school and then had a, had a stint in college, isn't that right? Did you play baseball um, in college? I had the opportunity to play in college, but chose not to. Um, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, I was uh, playing for the high school baseball team and playing for the American Legion team, which was a little little higher level. 
and I played one year when I was in college at, in American Legion. And um, I had offers to go to different colleges. Uh, a couple of colleges that I had offers to go play baseball and soccer, um, <laughs> but they weren't. They, they didn't have engineering schools, and I wanted to be an engineer. So I actually had an uncle who um, was in professional baseball, and he came to watch me play. And we sat down over dinner one night, and I said, "Hey, what do you think um, about the potential for me playing ball one day?" And, making it in the big leagues because that was always my dream and he said well how good are you at math and science <laughs> and so uh i said well I, I i could probably do okay with that stuff so i made a decision to go to the university of south carolina where i could get a good engineering degree and uh, it was the right decision for me uh at the time my parents were very supportive of either but um you know i think we made the right choice and and um uh, uh I would love to have played ball for a living, but um, that wasn't that wasn't the plan for me. Well, and and knowing you and and hanging out together and and uh, playing just a little golf, you play golf. I kind of hack around. You have a competitive spirit. You have a com you have a competitive nature. Where did that come from? How was that developed? Was that through that? Where did it come from? I uh, you know I think my parents uh, drove it into me. Both of them. I one time, uh, I think at a graduation ceremony I was speaking at one time, I, I said that I, I think I thought I got my competitive spirit from my mom and it kind of made my dad real angry <laughs> because my dad, my dad coached me from the time I was four until I was in high school ball. Wow. And, uh, he poured a lot into me. Um, I don't think my mom ever missed a baseball game that I played in or my sister. Um, but you know, it was a family event. Every time that happened, my sister kept score. And uh, when I played ball, so, you know, both of them, I think, had um, instilled in me uh, a, a desire to do well, a desire to compete. And I think some of that just comes from individuals. I think it's in your makeup. But but I do think that um, I don't like to lose. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, one day I wasn't a very good sport and, and uh, my mom was getting on me about it. And my dad said, hey, listen you show me a good loser and I'll show you a loser, <laughs> but you need to learn to handle it better. Uh, you need to learn to, to be gracious. You need to learn to, to, to treat others with respect and dignity. And so that was a lesson that I learned from uh, the both of them. Um, and I, and I think it's true. I think if, if you don't mind losing, um, you don't work as hard. And I, and I think hard work and perseverance, frankly, is what, makes most people successful in life. A lot of people fail miserably the first 20 times they do something. Um, and I, but I do think that uh, if you stick at it, um, then I think you've got a really good chance and learn from those missteps and mistakes. And uh, don't be afraid to say you messed up or you blew mm. it or whatever and learn from those things. Then I think um, th that's, that's what helps to make you more successful. And I've certainly had that in my life as well. You know, you said that that phrase, he poured into me, he invested in me. And and in doing that, he was demonstrating the, the leadership trait that I've seen you do so, so many times in your in your career that I've since I've known you. And that is to pour into someone else, to invest in that person and to um, or, or to allow someone else to even invest in these people who were struggling. That that came uh, that came very early on for you. You lived that, didn't you? I did. I learned I learned it at a very early age. And. I had it modeled for me, and I think it's easier to do those things when you see it modeled for, for you. And mm -hmm. um, I love to uh, pour into other people. I love to mentor other people. Yeah. Um, I had a session last night with a guy that I just love, and uh, he, he called and said, hey, I've got a big decision to make about my career, and I'd like some time. And uh, I, I love spending time helping people think through those things. Obviously, I can't decide for them, but to make them think about it maybe a little bit differently such that they can see all the sides and the facets of decisions that we make. And um, I, I think it's important for leaders to do that. Um, I, I am terribly incapable myself, but if you have the right folks are around me and the right people with the right skills, with the right environment, uh, and, and you help to remove obstacles for them, then, you know, you've got a really good chance of succeeding as a team. And I think that has been a, a prescription that I've used and um, have had some success at. 
So when you were, were wanting to be an engineer, did you have aspirations for being in the space industry specifically, or did that just, just happen? No, it happened in 1969. I was, what, eight years old, seven or eight years old when uh, Neil Armstrong stepped foot on the moon. Uh, I remember watching the TV that night and um, black and white. <laughs> uh, my mom coming in and saying, you're still watching them. I'm like, mom, this is so cool. I, I think we're, what, this is so cool. I want to be a part of something that hard. Because I, at a very young age, had a bit of an engineering mind. I'm thinking, how did they do that? You know, what did they have to do? How did they solve that? How did they actually get there? What kind of, you know, what does it take to get there? Uh, and I realized how hard it was and um, heard people talking about it and just tried to learn from that and understand that this was an incredible feat uh, that humans made uh, that many 50 years ago. And I just felt, you know, compelled to, that that was something that I might want to do and, and that being a part of something that hard in life might be something that, um, that would be fun. So, so you jumped into that arena um, in, in your professional life and, and began, what, where did you begin? How, what was the first, your first foray into this field, space field? Yeah, you know, I had an instructor, a professor at the University of South Carolina to design the heat shield for the Apollo capsule. Um, and that helped also to point me that direction. I had lots of conversations with him after class about how that worked and and as a result, heat transfer became my very favorite subject. Well, imagine that, you know, it, you end up having your favorite subjects are typically the one, the, the folks that you can connect with and, and really learn from and talk to. And so um, that got my attention. And then a buddy that I went to college with, um, he was playing football at South Carolina and I was uh, just going to engineering school. He's trying to do both. We studied together some, and uh, I kid him now about doing his homework for him. But uh, <laughs> I bet you I, did. I can tell you that we we uh, we spent a lot of time in the library together studying. <laughs> but he's still a great friend uh, to me today, and um, he actually had a connection through football uh, to NASA at Kennedy Space wow. Center, hmm. and um, he got an interview, got a job. Uh, I, he graduated in May. I graduated the following August as I was working my way through college. Um, and uh, when I got, when I graduated in August, I went down to see him for a few days. He got an interview and got a job with NASA. I'd been working for a small engineering company in Columbia uh, at the time when I got the job offer from NASA and um, then drove to Cape Canaveral in, the, in a Honda Civic uh, hatchback with everything I owned. And most of that was speakers. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, started started a career uh, with my buddy Ralph and uh, uh, working on the main engines of the space shuttle. Um, it was terribly overwhelming the first few days. Uh, they took me in the orbiter itself, the back end where the engines are, and said, "Okay, you're going to be the uh, you're going to become an expert on all this hardware." Kind of blew my mind at the time, but you know, you just learned that you learn a little bit every day. Um, yeah. Yeah. Find good people that can help teach you. Yeah. And uh, that's what I did. And I dug in pretty hard and, and learned every day and eventually uh, became a uh, an, an engineer on the, the space shuttle main engines and main propulsion systems. And then, you know, just had other opportunities to do larger and larger things and eventually got to be the launch director for several space shuttle missions, which was Probably the most fun job I ever had, but probably maybe maybe the most stressful as well. I, I bet. And I, I've got a question about that, but I want to push pause on that right for a moment because I'm going to circle back around to this pouring into others and investing into others. And, and you had the opportunity um, in your in your life as an adult to really pour into someone that to, to two people that you're continuing to, to make a difference for. Um, every single day. And, and those are your daughters um, and the adoption process. Um, you just had a heart for that. Could, could, you, could you talk about that just for a minute? I know that's a sensitive topic because it's a private topic, but I think it's so relevant to who you are that you, you gave these precious, precious girls um, the gift of life. Yeah, you know, we, my wife and I worked hard to try to have kids and it wasn't working out. And, uh, you know, it just came to the point where we realized that wasn't going to happen for us to naturally have children. So we decided that uh, we would pursue adoption. And both of the situations that we found were 
they were ordained. There's no other way to say it. They were mm. just ordained and meant to happen. And mm. God had a plan. And uh, we got two beautiful girls um, uh, early, very early in their lives, like day one. Um, and we were able to raise them, I think, in a, in a good way. They're uh, 27 and 23 or four now. Mm. And uh, they're lovely people. One yes, of them is love. One of them is a mother, um, and uh, now I'm getting to experience grandparenthood as uh, six months, six plus months now, and that is just an amazing thing. But um, yeah, these kids were a big part of uh, who I was and who I uh, tried to help them to be and try to teach them who they needed to be. And um, so yeah, we poured we poured our lives into these kids and. Uh, you know, they've turned out okay. They're, yes. they're, they're, they're lovely, lovely people who have uh, great lives and care about other people deeply and um, mm. I think are doing really well in life. Very proud I, of them. I've just seen that legacy. You know, you spoke about your dad and your mom pouring into you and your sister, a close family. They taught you guys how to do that, how to support one another, how to be there. And and then I've watched you pour into your daughters and, uh, and to teach them about, and, and by your actions, about what it means to, to totally pour into someone and, and to be there for them in good times and bad, as, as we all know, with, with children, we, we all who, who have adult children know that, that it's, a, it's not a straight path. It's, yeah, it's, it's up and down and around, and, and you have consistently walked and, and poured into their life, and, and we kind of see that pattern now back from who you who you were and and you pass that legacy that that legacy on to them so um in just a couple of words what's it like being a granddad now now that you're at that phase it's just awesome i i i I, when you look at them it's just a miracle It, it it just it's a miracle every time you see one you see them do different things he's beginning to interact now and that's really fun and i just can't wait for the future i can't wait to be able to do really fun things with him um, I, I hope I can enjoy it even more than I did with my kids. I enjoyed my kids a lot. We had a lot of really fun times together, um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing to spend some time uh, with with the grand boy, the, uh, the grand baby boy uh, next week even. So I'm uh, very excited about being able to do that. It's a, it's a miracle of life. And um, you just see the whole cycle when you see the third or the fourth generation come through that it's, mm-hmm. um, it's very rewarding. Well, and I will say this, even now in your life, uh, you made a choice, another choice to invest and you're investing in a, in a young man now, um, who is, is on the, is, is on the spectrum of autism, maybe, maybe on the severe side. And, uh, you, I, I've seen you through, through the years, just totally, um, give to him and love him and lead him. Um, it's speak to that, if you will. How, why did you do that? Why did you make that choice? Yeah, you, you know, went through a, a difficult time for a few years, uh, experienced divorce, which is an awful thing for anyone to experience. But um, then I found someone in my life that I adored, uh, and she has a, at the time, I guess he was nine or 10. Um, year old uh, boy that's severely autistic, uh, nonverbal still, even at the age of 18. Um, and I fell in love with both of them, frankly. Um, mm. he, he is a, he's a lovely person. He just has challenges beyond what the rest of us have. You know, we all are, we all have our issues. We're all disabled in some ways. Um, his are more severe. And it's taught me uh, to look at people differently. Um, Mm. it's taught me to understand and look behind the face behind that particular action and see what might be causing someone to be the way that they are. uh, I I think it's been terribly enlightening for me, um, along, along this journey to see him, uh, and it adds a perspective to life that I would not have otherwise had. Mm. Um, I was not around disability much when I was growing up. There were some in the school, but frankly, I just, I did, we didn't have much of it in my family. And so it was a new thing for me. And I had to learn um, a lot. Uh, and my wife has taught me an enormous amount about it uh, with her sweet, gentle heart. And um, I've learned 
uh, a lot more about um, all of the needs that uh, many, many people have that need our help, frankly. And, um, you know, I'm blessed to, to, to have him in my life and, mm. um, and look forward to every day. Every day is a new day, as my wife says, and, and she's absolutely right. And some days are more challenging than others as a result. And, but uh, there are a lot of beautiful ones um, as they come and go. Yeah, I think about that and, and being being who you are, whether it's that, that competitive nature as you pour into him, be, doing the Dave thing is what I call it. You don't do anything halfway. You know, you jump in, you jump in all the way. And you have also with him um, been, been a big supporter and, and maybe serve on the board of, of his school. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that investment and what, what caused you to, to what drove you to do that? Yeah, I'm not on the board of his school, but I am involved in his school and uh, are doing fundraising for the school, trying to help them. Um, you know, there's a lot of need, a lot of need in our community. Uh, we don't realize how much um, autism there is mm. uh, in our community. I, I think we have a higher per capita ratio than most communities. Uh, we've got a lot of engineers and scientists and and some of those folks are on the spectrum. Um, I may be on the spectrum myself. So. Um, I just feel the need to help um, folks that um, are challenged in that way, uh, try to understand them better, try to help to provide resources for them. And so that's why we've chosen to get involved and try to help the school raise funds to, um, to help move it forward and to continue it uh, and to, to, to enlarge it. Um, there's always a very long waiting list. Um, there are a lot of families that just can't afford it, frankly. And so we're trying to help uh, that along and to help them to be able to reach more people uh, for a longer period of time. Yeah, and uh, and once again, in day fashion, you're a bit humble. I, I, you have been major, major uh, contributors, you and your wife, to to raising funds for that school. I mean, uh, you know, you guys invited us to a silent auction, and next thing I know, I'm walking away with this Eagles album that, you know, what in the world? <laughs> Um, it is my prized possession, but uh, it was an honor to do that. But you have played an instrumental role in that in that organization, and um, because of, because you poured into to this young man, and you saw that need, and and you jumped in. So we, we get back, kind of turning the corner as we get ready to close this thing out. I want to I want to take just a moment to to talk about your your stellar career and 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 all that you have done is amazing and the impact that you have made has been incredible um one of the most difficult things you you faced in your career as a leader hmm. all there there have been a number um you know the, the, the most difficult times are when you just fail uh, when you just make a bad choice you make a poor choice and then you have to live with the consequences um I was a part of uh, a decision to launch a, a space shuttle uh, one time that mm -hmm. didn't end well. Um, and we lost some friends as a result. Um, the most difficult things I've ever done, clearly. Um, I got the call the day it happened and um, they asked me to go run the recovery effort. So go find your friends and um, return them to their families and then pick up the pieces of this accident and kind of put it back together and figure out what happened so that we might go fly again. And um, I did that. It was uh, a very traumatic experience for a lot of people. Um, I'm sure more so for the families than those of us who were involved in it, but uh, difficult nonetheless. Um, and it was, um, yeah. it was an experience I learned, I probably learned as much from as anything. Um, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about other people. You learn a lot about the work that you do and how important it is to um, Americans, frankly. Um, we had people that would do anything for us. It, it helps you to understand the resources that this country can pull together uh, when you have a problem like that. Um, and it helps you to realize who your friends are and, uh, and how, you know, when you have a, a bad day, uh, what you have to do is um, grieve a little bit and then get to work. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we did. And we uh, found enough of the pieces of the vehicle to put it back together 
and um, figured out exactly what happened and we fixed that problem. And we went and flew again a number of times. And um, that's what the crew that we lost would have wanted. Um, I'm certain of that because I knew several of them quite well. And um, that's what we did. And I think that approach to life is a lesson that um, I remember um, maybe as well as any that I've ever learned. And so hey, you had you had a time early on in that process where you had to create a message and you weren't sure how to message this. And it was mm. it was getting close and it was time for you to go out and, and address, you know, America. What tell that story. Yeah, so I was running Marshall Space Flight Center at the time. It was after the accident, and we were trying to figure out what we needed to do to fix the problem after we determined what it was um, and all the cultural elements of not just, you know, what happened physically, but how, how did we fail as an organization? And we learned some things from that, and we got that report, and the day the report came out, I had to do a press conference and had to decide how I was going to was going to handle that. What are we going to say? Um, so I laid awake for days and days and nights and nights thinking about how to handle that. And, um, you know, the night before, uh, I was awake <laughs> in the middle of the night and it kind of came to me. Um, you know, I had a lot of press training and I knew they kind of needed a soundbite or a headline or something. And the words came to me. Um, you know, we don't need to be defensive about this. We need to learn from the mistakes that we made. We need to take responsibility for those things we don't need to blame anybody else and so my comment was we missed it mm. um, that was the term that I used in the beginning of the press conference and I think it just diffused things because if you try to be defensive people are just going to continue to come at you if you try to um, place blame people are going to say well what about you you know so uh, I think it was uh, the right thing to say at the time and that's the way the headline read the next day and I think it helped people to understand that we were we were as real as we could be about this. We understood what happened and that we were doing everything that we knew to do to make it better. Um, we can't fix it, um, but um, you know we can um, do what everyone wanted to do, which was figure out what happened and fix that problem technically. Mm -hmm. and then move forward and um i think that's what we that's another huge lesson in life for all of us right um they mess up you mess up and uh they take the responsibility mm. and, um, and dig in to try to fix the problem mm. work the problem that's the way we keep talking go just go work the problem work the problem I, I can't tell you how many times i've told my kids that when they're struggling with something just when you find yourself in a problem like that work the problem <laughs> And uh, ask that next question so that you understand it deeply enough to be able to solve it the right way. Mm, so many leadership nuggets there that, that we could talk about all day. I want you to think about your life as a leader. What, what are, you know, one or two of perhaps the, the biggest thrills in your life from a, from a leadership perspective or personal perspective? Um, you know, what are some of the, what are some of the victories there that, that you, yeah. Watching your kids graduate from high school or college or uh, watching them, you know, have that great volleyball game. I can't tell you how many weekends, nights and others I spent in, in gyms watching them play. And that's uh, there's there's nothing like I don't think watching your kids uh, do well, be successful, make good choices and, and then benefit from it. Mm -hmm. um, and from a career perspective, you know, I was involved in 120 plus uh, shuttle missions couple of them didn't end well, um, but, but a whole lot of them did. And it's just a very tangible result. You can see the results from the work that you do. And so I'm very blessed that, I can, that you can see that. And even today, we work on all kinds of very complex systems. And when we deliver something to a customer and that system works exactly correctly, oh boy, there is some serious pride that goes along with that mm. in, in what your team has been able to accomplish. And we've had a lot of success at that. So, uh, you know, I think you look at those milestones and uh, you feel a sense of accomplishment. Um, and, you know, learning new things and mastering them, I think. I, I, I take as much pride in, in, in those kinds of successes as I do the bigger milestones as well. Just 
you know, saying, you know, I'm going to learn how to do that and do it and then be successful at it, I think is, um, is something that gives us just, just a sense of accomplishment that mm. uh, I, I think is huge in, in our lives. So personal question, talking about learning things and mastering them. Mm. Um, you are an incredible golfer as we are sitting here today. What's your handicap? Um, let me look it up. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, sure, yeah. I'm a five, I'm a five point two or so today. Um, I'm typically wow. you know, between three and seven or eight. It just depends on how much I get to play and and uh, whether I'm in a good mindset when I'm out there. Um, I love the game. It it, it 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 is a challenge. I play with a great group of guys that are. You better have thick skin around um, <laughs> because it just makes it so much more fun when. Uh, yeah, you have somebody to to play against and enjoy the day, and uh, and I am, I enjoy Larry golf as well. I really do. Um, it's just a little different, and uh, it's just a little different. And, For those of you that don't know, Larry golf is when Dave and I go out, and uh, we we have a great time. Larry makes all the rules. That's I do funny. as we go. That's about it. And, and, and they change every hole. <laughs> To it's whatever for, whatever his benefit, that's how the rules change. That's it. it it's for hackers <laughs> like me, and he's very gracious. And the conversation is what thrills me when we're together, and, and, and he is the athlete, but he is very gracious to play Larry Golf with me. We have a great time. Well, turning the corner to wrap this thing up, I, I have just a, just a question or two left for you. Dave, as you think about aspiring leaders, the, these young leaders who are coming up, and, and I've watched you interact with the um, young leaders at Dynetics. I've, I've seen you engage them and others, even you know, on a personal level, but it amazes me how I see that look in your eye and I sense the joy you get from investing in them and seeing them do well. What, what tips would you give some aspiring leaders who would hear this podcast that would, would help them in their leadership journey? Yeah, you know, find something you love. You've got to find something you'd be passionate about. If you're waking up in the morning uh, not wanting to go to work or not enjoying what you do, you need to find, you need to change. I mean, you just need, you need to think hard about what you're doing and whether that makes sense. So find something you love to do, something that you can um, get a great group of people around you to learn from and work towards. Um, and um, just, you can learn something from anybody. I mean, the whole point in life, I think, is... It, 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 along your career journey is to learn, is to learn new things, learn new skills and new capabilities. And you'll have people in your life that are brilliant and you can learn everything from. You'll have people in your life that do stupid things and don't manage people well, and you can learn as much from them as you can the brilliant people. Just watch and see the, see the interaction and see what happens and see the positives and the negatives that come from all of that. Mm. So, so be, you know, have a learning mentality. Always try to master a new skill. Um, um, and, and treat people with, with respect and dignity. I, I think that's a huge part of, of being a, a good leader. You don't want people to like you. You want people to respect you. Mm. I think that's a, a huge thing that I had to learn uh, throughout my career. Um, so do the right thing uh, in, in, a, in every situation, and I think, I think that will happen. So, um, wow. you know, working hard. Uh, you have to work hard. I think if, if if you're not willing to work hard, um, then success is just more difficult to attain. Um, you have to be willing to pour yourself into something just like people pour themselves into you as a person. And uh, so I think working hard is is uh, is the key and and wanting to be successful and want and don't focus so much on the job as focusing on uh, getting things done the right way. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, why, you know, how did you, how did you plan out your career? I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I wanted to be in the space business and it ended about there. Um, what I did was did the job I had that day very well, wow. I thought, and you know what? People ask you to do other things. Uh, when you do that, they always, you want to be the guy that they or a girl that they ask to take on the hard problem. Um, even if you fail, uh, you're going to learn a whole lot. And so you know, take on the hard things, uh, do your job the best you can. And I think the rest of that has a way of, uh, of working its way out and opportunities come the way of folks to, to um, take on hard things and fail until they're successful at it. 
incredible nuggets and uh, for all of us, not just new leaders, but, but, but for all of us, I, I love that. Um, worry about respect and not necessarily approval. That's great. That's a great word and a great nugget. Last question before I, I let you go. I know you're incredibly busy and you have so much going on. What's Dave King going to do in the next uh, three to five, you think? Not, not career-wise, but what, what aspirations do you have for yourself in this next season of your life? Well, you know, um, I'm going to learn Spanish um, at some point. Um, I, I'm now in a family where I kind of need to know Spanish to defend myself. <laughs> um, and so uh, I think that's probably the next goal I have uh, on, on a personal level. Um, you know, that. I'm going to enjoy life and, and continue to try to lead a great, just an incredible team. You know, I, I have found that if you pick really good people and give them the resources that they need and try to remove obstacles for them, uh, you are the one who is successful in many cases. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm going to try to do. I've got a great team that works incredibly hard that is very, very capable. And we have some of the hardest problems in the world that we're taking on. And so um, uh, I'm going to try to continue to lead that team in a way that um, we can be successful for our customers as well as uh, our employees and our shareholders. And, and I look forward to doing that. Um, I'm going to enjoy life. Um, mm. You know, um, I, I think, work hard, play hard. I've kind of always done that. But as you get older, I think you realize that um, enjoying life is, uh, is a part that you really need to take advantage of. And I look forward to doing that with my family, with my children, my grandchildren, um, and, uh, and all my friends, um, and spending more time uh, with them enjoying life. I love it. And you have taught me to appreciate a, a, a good glass of wine. Yeah. And, uh, we're still working on the uh, on the bourbon, but we've got, the, we've got the wine. So we'll look forward to that. Dave King, an incredible leader, incredible wisdom. Thank you for giving us uh, just a, a bit of you and, and sharing your time with us. It, it meant so much. And, uh, and thank you for the impact and the difference that you continue to make. And you are truly a leader who crosses the line every day between his head and his heart. So thank you so much for that. 